Yeah, Coach, pretty obvious. They've experienced a bunch of coaching turnover. How much have you seen them change from a, a football standpoint? Uh, I mean, they're different defensively, um, for sure. Uh, you know, obviously the offensive staff and defensive staff changed. Um, but you, there's, there's remnants, I mean, because the quarterback's the same, so you keep – some things the same with them and you know most of college football is doing something similar so there's some similarities into that but obviously the the history there that's at washington kaylin's history and then uh defensively history kane has and uh, what they've done this year as well it's different yeah how much if any insight at all does Traveris have on this alabama team and what has he brought to this team now as he's their as he's your co-defensive coordinator and safeties coach well, he's a really good coach. He's a really good recruiter. He's a he's a great person. So he's brought a lot of energy, enthusiasm, uh, confidence day to day in our players. Uh, he's a good football coach. So uh, we're very fortunate to to, to have him, and um, he's got a lot of knowledge as far as pertaining to them. I mean, he really hasn't been part of their staff, so it's like intricacies into what they do defensively or offensively. Not a lot there. I mean, uh, he knows some of their players, but we know a lot of their players too because we recruited a lot of them. And, um, I mean, Dante was with some of them out in California. So, you know, it's uh, not a lot to speak of, a lot of uh, things that you can hang your hat on. You're, you're worried about how we play, not the particulars about their players. Are you expecting it to be strange for you going back there without having Nick Saban as the other coach? No, I don't expect it to be strange. I mean, that's it's just the, the normal course of progression. I think it's strange going back there sometimes because I lived there. For Our kids were born there and lived there for nine years and had such great experiences there. But we had that uh, in COVID. It was more strange then because of the stands. Kirby, I know the sample size might be small, just three games. What type of jump in Jalen's game have you seen since the last time you played him? Yeah, it's considerable – jump as a just natural pocket passer you see him make more throws now that are like rhythm throws on time throws rpo throws um you know he's he you can tell he's become more comfortable with those things um still some of his his best and most exciting plays are when things break down or when he runs the ball by design either one is very dangerous um, but he, he, you can see him as a deep ball passer, the vertical passing game, the shots, uh, the rhythm throws, the outs, the timing throws, the RPO throws. He's, he's improved uh, immensely at that part of his game, but he's always been good at the uh, athletic part of the game. You actually touched on this uh, a minute ago, but I was just going to ask you, it, is there any nostalgia at all when you go back to Tuscaloosa now, having spent so much time there, so much time in that stadium? Less now. I mean, it's just, you, you know, you move on. I think the last time we went, it was four or five years from the time we had uh, uh, lived there. And you're, it's so weird when you, when you play there because you're in and out. You know, you're, you're there and then you're gone. So uh, it's just different, you know. But you, you really focus on the players, what they have to do, what we have to do to execute, that it takes away from that thing. There's a lot of people that are still there in the organization that I'm close with and have a lot of respect for. Um, but that's that's the case in a lot of these places in the SEC. Yeah, Kirby, I guess to follow up on Milrow, one, do you, do you look at all at, at last year's game just with the jump you feel that he's made? And, and two, what are the challenges of defending him, especially for a front seven, you know, keeping you know, rush lanes, keeping contained, things like that? Yeah, you know, do you, do you look at last year's game? Well, you always look at things like that from a personnel standpoint, matchup. You see guys in their, that game, our game, um, that overlap, but with him, the challenges are immense because he's an incredible football player. I mean, there, there, there is no design to a play that you can draw up and then say, well, I'm pretty sure this is going to happen on this play with him because you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, th sometimes the worst thing you can do is cover everybody with him. And sometimes uh, the best thing you can do is cover everybody. It just depends. Um, are you are you capable of getting him down on the ground and tackling him at times? What matchups do you have? Um, it's he he is as different a football player in college football as I've played against in a long time because people think he's just a runner and that's not the case. 
He has a tremendous arm and can do things with his arm that other people can't. He can reach spots on the field and uh, get it there faster than you can break on it, uh, better than most arm talent people. So it's a it's a tremendous challenge to defend uh, a guy like him. Kirby over here, uh, the value of the two two part question: the value of the bye week um, for for Carson and Coach Bobo to look at the first three games, and then two. Just where your linebacking core is at in this game compared with the last time you met Alabama? Value for Coach Bobo and Carson, I, I don't I mean, I think it's it's relative because they had an off week too. So it's not like you're going to make these uh, incredible jumps because of a bye week. What do you do in the bye week? You look back at yourself. You look back and you, you do quality control. You try to uh, find tendency breakers. You try to find new wrinkles. Um, you try to really get better at blocking and tackling, which is what football is. And that's what we focused on was that. How do we get better as an entire team, even the younger part of your team? So that was the focus of the bye week. Um, in terms of our linebacking core, you know, I think Smile is – closer to healthy. I think this time last year he was having to play with a really hurt foot and he was pushing through and he, he, he pushed through in the SEC championship game with a significant injury. And I don't know if he's 100%, but he's much closer. I mean, he's come off a significant surgery and playing much better. Um, the two younger guys are uh, a little bit older and a little more experienced. Um, but still, those guys, you know, when I look at Raylan and CJ, they're, they're relatively young players and uh, they're in their second year. They got to play a lot more last year than typically they would. And then Jalen's playing um, as well, multiple positions. But those four guys are all playing good. Kirby, how is uh, Mike Cal Williams? And are, are you optimistic he'll be able to play? I'm hopeful. Um, we'll see. I, you know, he didn't do much last week. He, um, he got uh, a lot of rehab. Uh, Friday and Sunday and uh, was able to run and, and do some things Friday and Sunday, which is positive, but hadn't been out to practice today and we'll see how today goes. Yeah, just as well, how are Warren Brinson and Jordan Hall doing and how much in the off season did you go back and rewatch that Alabama game and try and diagnose what went wrong for you all that day? I don't watch the games in the off season. Um, we watch the games after it. Uh, we go through and critique those and then try to get better at the tendencies and the things we have to. We, we look at future opponents, and uh, Alabama was a future opponent, but it wasn't the same uh, staff as it was uh, prior to that. Um, Warren Brinson practiced uh, last week, um, the end of the week, and then uh, we're hopeful to get Jordan Hall back, who's you know been working really hard, tirelessly, uh, doing rehab, um, and been busting his butt all weekend. So we'll see where he's at today. Every each week you talk about the, one of the keys to the game is explosive plays. This Alabama team it puts up a lot of explosive plays. How do you prep for that? Well, you do your job. I mean, uh, they're, 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 they've got explosive plays that are, you know, uh, what would you call off-schedule explosive plays, and they've got on-schedule explosive plays. So when you have a chance at both those, it just increases your opportunity. And their explosives are – Super explosive, you know. They don't, you know, they're, they're not talking about the 15 20 variety, they're talking about the 50 60 70 variety. They've got some really good skilled players out on the perimeter that are explosive. They got a quarterback that defines explosive, and they got good backs. So, you know, when you got good football players uh, and weapons that they have out on the perimeter, it can be explosive. Our job is to try to prevent those, um, not give up big plays, and uh, a lot of that starts with you know how we how well we play around the quarterback. In your share of uh, elite wide receivers at Alabama, is Ryan Williams one of those uh, potentially elite wide receivers? And what kind of problems does he possess uh, for your secondary and your corners? Yeah, he's he's in the same line with the guys they've had in the past. Uh, super quick, talented, confident with the ball, uh, great ball skills, great quickness. He's a track athlete that was elite. He's a junior, you know. Then he just he comes out. And he's already performing at a high level. I don't think that there's a lot of anxiety or nerves for him. He's not one of these guys that, that the moment's too big for him. He naturally jumped right in and has made plays in every game. And um, they, they, have, they have a lot of really good skill players out on the perimeter. And I think that Jalen does a good job of uh, using his skill set to get them the ball. 
you mentioned their defense looking a little different now. How would or what stands out to you about the way they've played defense through, I guess, three games? They played really hard. Uh, they got guys flying to the ball, uh, punching at the ball, getting the ball out, disrupting uh, the, the, the quarterbacks. They've been really uh, disruptive in terms of um, things up front they do to create issues, uh, batting balls, um, and uh, they're physical. I mean, they're physical and fast. When you look at them, they have a, they have a depth in their front that they're able to play a lot of guys with size that are hard to move. Um, so they do a really good job defensively. And they're multiple. They got you know split safety and single high looks. They do a good job changing it up. Uh, Kirby, I know you sort of uh, over here touched touched on the. <laughs> Touched on this when you talked about going back to Tuscaloosa and some of the feelings you had about that. But I'm just curious without, because of your history, personal history with Nick Saban and working for him and then some great games against him over these last uh, nine years, just personally, does it feel, diff you know, any nostalgia in you or just different or, or uh, I think the word strange was used. Is that, uh, how does it feel for you personally to not be going against an Alabama team that he's not coaching? Well, he recruited a lot of them, um, and and they're good players, you know. And I think any time you go against a really good team that's um, a powerhouse in college football, that it's it's a challenge. And I really look at it like this is a hell of an opportunity for our kids, our program, national stage, and you know we're on the national stage a lot. We've been in the national stage a lot, especially the last three to four years. So it's, a, it's the reason kids want to come to Georgia. They say, I want to play in games like that. You know, most viewed game uh, two weeks ago Saturday night was, was our game. It's going to probably be that way this Saturday night. And when you start looking at it, kids want to have an opportunity to play in those tight games. And that's, you know, we're going to have more of them after this. So uh, it's a great opportunity to play in a national stage. And um, that's what we built our program on is, is playing tough opponents. Going back to last year, new coaching staff at Alabama, a lot of transfer players, new people. How much will this game be similar to that one when it comes to uh, their game plan? How similar are these teams, or are they vastly different than they were when you faced them last year? Yeah, I, I, I don't know that. I mean, I don't know their game plan, so I don't know how similar it will be or different it will be. I mean, we're a different team. They're a different team. They're a different staff. We're a similar staff. So I don't. I, I can't compare last year's game to this year's. Coach, in terms of your veteran leadership returning, from a leadership perspective, how have you seen this core group of the guys, the upperclassmen, grow since that SEC championship game last year? What impact has it had on them moving forward? Well, I think each one different impact. You know, there's guys um, in the locker room, you know, upset, and, and everybody handles that in different ways. Um, I think, uh, you know, the motivation it gives to guys to want to come back and have an opportunity to win an SEC championship, which, you know, this group didn't do last year. They have a chance to do that. It doesn't all hinge on this game, but that game did. And, and I certainly think that a lot of our guys, you know, remember it, and they, they want to use that as motivation where – the motivation should be to play your best and defeat your opponent in a big stage um, on the road in the SEC, which is always a challenge. And um, it's really about the preparation we do today in these next three to four days. Kirby, I wonder in the uh, times you may have had a chance to see Nick on, on TV, what you think of him in that role and what you make of his life after coaching, after obviously being relentless as a college football coach for so many years. Uh, he's extremely thorough. and. Uh, he enjoys what he does. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that he gets an opportunity to do what he wants to do and uh, be with who he wants to be with within his family and um, enjoy that. And I'm really happy he's still part of college football because he makes college football better. With three games under your belt now, how do you evaluate how your team has started in those games? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that, that we've started fast. I would say that uh, everybody wants to start fast, but sometimes it's like that. And sometimes there's no rhyme and reason, and then sometimes there's things you do that you, you could do better, you could execute better. Sometimes they just beat you, 
and they just whip you. Um, and it's gone both ways, offensively and defensively. We've had drives all, uh, defensively that, that you know, we, we gave up too much field position and too many consecutive third downs that we didn't get off the field that maybe just made our offense start backed up. But um, it hasn't been perfect. Um, but we have shown resiliency, and that's a trait that I would probably trade outside of perfect. I would trade a lot of traits for resiliency. Kirby, you mentioned some of the guys maybe using last year's loss as motivation. Just, is there anything you guys do as a staff to make sure that they're not trying to chase ghosts and change the past? Nope. I mean, I don't think we chase the past at all. I think um, that you watch the tape, two different teams, you know, we're, 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 we're focused on, like, what we can do to be our best this week. The, the, the ghost we're chasing is past performances this year and what we can do to clean that up and how we can be more efficient. I wouldn't say it's anything to do with them. Hi there. Um, I was just wondering if you had any kind of comment on the reckless driving arrests, particularly the Daniel Harris arrest after uh, the Kentucky game. Yeah, I'm terribly disappointed and uh, something that we don't stand for. question, but <laughs> go with that one. Uh, over the last uh, 51 games, you're, you've only had two losses, both to Alabama. What would winning this game mean to you? It means we got to get ready for Auburn. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, it's really that simple, guys. It's a, it's a conference schedule game. It's going to be a really tough environment on the road, which sounds like a broken record because the last one we were talking about was a tough environment on the road. Um, and, and, you know, win or lose, the next one's going to be really hard and the next one's going to be really hard and the next one's going to be really hard. They all are hard. And in our league, and our conference, you see it every week. It's tough. It's physical. So we got to have a great week of preparation. they got a tremendous team. Nothing but respect for Kalen DeBoer and what he's done with that team and that staff. I think he's done a great job of putting them in a position to grow and get better. Um, and they've gotten better with each game. So we need to do the same this week.